This video is designed to teach you the steps of the water cycle. The first step that most people are familiar with is the idea of evaporation. This is water going from a liquid state to a gas state as it moves its way up into the clouds. Once the water gets to the clouds, it condenses down and this requires what's called a nucleation site. It's basically like a dust particle or something that the water can actually condense around in order to form the cloud itself up in the sky. After the water is condensed, if the conditions are right, you'll get precipitation when the water then returns back down to the ground. Uh, one common misconception with precipitation is it's not just limited to rain. This could be precipitation of any type. So it could be snow, it could be hail, it could be sleet. You know, any state of water that goes from the clouds back down to either the ground or the water itself would be considered precipitation. While it's raining, a few things can happen. That water can be directly returned to a body of water, whether it's an ocean or a lake, if it's raining over that particular area. If it's raining over the land, a few different things can happen. One thing that's shown on your diagram here is the idea of runoff. So as water begins to move down a hill or something like that, it will form a stream or a river and run off into a larger body of water. Uh, the streams and rivers typically come from areas where they're getting consistent water, whether it's maybe snow melt from like the top of a mountain or maybe a natural spring. Another thing that can happen to the rain is that it can be taken up by plants. So we need a little tree here to help us with this one. So now if we have our little tree here, while it's raining, uh, that tree can absorb some of the water from the ground. So this is referred to as root uptake. Another step in this process that involves trees that's new for a lot of people is somewhat similar to evaporation, but it's when trees give off water from their leaves that ends up going back to the atmosphere. Uh, this is a process called transpiration. Trees have to do this in order to form a pressure difference up in the leaves that allows them to pull new water up through their roots. So this idea of water evaporating from plants has the special name of transpiration. The last concept on here has to do with some of the water that's raining back down from the clouds in precipitation. Some of that water goes into the ground, but it's not picked up by root uptake. That water keeps moving down under the earth and ends up in what we call the groundwater or the aquifer. So this is water that's underground. Uh, if you have a well at home, you actually pump water out of the aquifer, out of that groundwater, and that's what you're using for water in your home. So not all of the water that ends up in the soil is taken up by trees or by grasses. Some of it ends up down there where we can use it for wells and things. Uh, one last thing about the water cycle is that you can move from any point in the water cycle and come back to that same point of origin. You know, For example, if we were to start in a body of water here, the water could evaporate out of that body of water, it could condense down in the clouds, it could rain back as precipitation, and then through runoff, that water could return to that original body of water. Uh, the reason that this is a cycle is that you can go through and start at any point, and moving through the water cycle, you can then return to that same point, which means we're never losing any water. Water can never be lost, it's just moved around the planet in different locations through the water cycle. Um, as always, thank you for watching.